In this video, we are going to show you how we built this high quality solid wood dining room table for $700. When we moved into our house in 2015, we purchased a six piece dining room set from Big Lots for $300. This dining set served us well for about seven years, but after our fifth child graduated from the high chair to a booster seat at the table, we needed a table that could sit our entire family of seven. We have always loved the traditional farmhouse table style of a white base and maple top, but we wanted something that would be a bit more of a one-of-a-kind piece that we would have forever. Now we have built a lot of furniture with solid wood tops and our favorite wood species is called spalted maple. So we went to our favorite lumber yard to purchase this, or as our kids like to call it, the wood farm. With spalted maple, no two pieces of wood are the same. The spalting is actually from a fungus the maple tree gets and it creates a one of a kind look that is stunning. Now I won't get too far into the weeds about spalted maple wood, but if you are wondering whether it is safe for a dining room table made from wood that contains a fungus, it is completely safe. Once the wood is kiln dried, the fungus is killed and no further damage is done to the wood. Now that we have decided what species of wood we wanted to use for the tabletop, it was time to choose what we wanted the table base to look like. We could have used a wood lathe and turned our own legs, but there are a lot of great companies from whom you can buy a turned leg for an affordable price. We decided to purchase our table legs on Amazon from a company called Carolina Leg Company. The table legs were in great shape when we received them and it made building the table vase very easy. You can find the link for these table legs in the description below. We then picked up six one by fours from Menards. We opted to go with the primed one by fours since we planned on painting the table base. The primed one by fours are great because you do not want to use wood that has knots because over time the knots will bleed through the paint even if you use the best primers on the market. I wish we knew the knots would bleed through the paint because we read this somewhere online, but unfortunately we have had to learn this from experience with a number of other projects. Menards is also one of our kids' favorite stores, so it usually turns into a family affair anytime we go there. <laughs> out from there. Come on. Come on. Come on. When it came to assembling the wood base, you can see we created a really cool honeycomb pattern, but I would not recommend creating a base with this pattern. We did this because we cut some of the one by fours to an incorrect length and did not want to waste the wood and spend more money on wood for the base, which will never be seen. And the only tools that were needed for creating the base was a miter saw, a drill, an impact driver, and a pocket hole jig. As you can see from the photo of the base, the legs of the table are now attached. To do this, we first attached the one by fours to the table legs using the pocket hole jig. From there, we simply attach the one by fours for the inside bracing using the pocket hole jig. One thing to keep in mind while you are assembling the table base is what you want the reveal or amount of overhang to be for the tabletop. We thought it looked best with a one and a quarter to one and a half inch overhang all the way around. Our tabletop is 42 inches by 84 inches, so this meant we wanted the outside dimension of our table base to be 39 inches by 81 inches. Now that the base is fully assembled, we moved on to the tabletop. We purchased a significant amount more spalted maple than we needed for the project because the spalting in the maple boards is only in parts of each board. We knew we needed more boards because we were going to have to remove the sections that did not contain the spalting. The first thing we did was lay out our spalted maple boards on the floor and determine what we wanted the pattern to be for the tabletop. We didn't want it to look like we pieced together a bunch of random boards, 
so we carefully selected where we would make all of our cuts. The hardest part of making the dining room table was going to be joining these nine foot long boards so you do not see any glue seams in the tabletop. We only have a six inch bench top jointer, so this was not going to work for these long boards. We were able to do all the joining of the boards with our table saw using a method that we recommend for needing to join boards without a jointer. The way we join the boards with the table saw is a very simple but effective process. First, you will need two pieces of the scrapped one by fours from building your table base. Then you will screw the one by fours to the ends of each board. Next, set your table saw fence the same width as the board on the right side. Once you start the joining process for the two boards, your fence should not be adjusted. You simply make a pass on the saw, unscrew the ends of the boards on the left, push the board closer to the board on the right, and make your next pass. You will repeat the process until the gap is completely removed and the boards are joined perfectly together. Now that the board on the right is joined with the right side of the board on the left, you will grab your next board and join the other side to the next board in your pattern. After all the boards are joined on the table saw, you will need to align the boards before gluing them. We use a dowel jig because we do not have an expensive biscuit joiner or domino joiner tool. You can purchase a cheap dowel jig like the Miles Craft dowel jig we have on Amazon for around $20. This works great for providing alignment for glue ups and strength to the joints. Once all your holes are drilled for the dowels, you are ready to start gluing the boards. Next, we glued the boards using a lot of squeeze clamps on these boards. Even though the final dimension was seven feet long, the boards were nine feet long during the glue ups before cutting them down to the final size. After the glue ups were complete, we were left with two 21 inch wide boards. We then took our glued up boards back to our lumber supplier where we purchased the spalted maple boards and we had them plane both sides of each half perfectly smooth. Our lumber supplier has a 25 inch planer and they agreed to plane them down for us after the glue up since we purchased the wood from them. The purchase in doing this was to then only have one seam down the middle that we will have to sand after the final glue up. If you have done any amount of woodworking, you know everyone's least favorite part of woodworking is sanding. Because the final tabletop is 42 inches wide, our squeeze clamps would not do the job for the final glue up. So we use these three quarter inch pipe clamps you can purchase on Amazon for less than $40. This allows you to purchase any size pipe to increase the maximum width of the boards you can clamp. After a lot of sanding, we moved on to finishing the tabletop with multiple coats of satin minwax polycrylic. We used the Home Right Super Finish Max to give it a glass clear finish that is perfectly smooth. After finishing the tabletop and the table base, it was time to set the table in place there are several ways you can attach your top to the base. We chose to go with small steel L brackets that you can purchase from any hardware store. They are inexpensive and do a great job of securing the top to the base. Now the table is complete. We were so thrilled with how the table turned out and now we can fit our entire family at the table and still have one seat to spare. If you're wondering whether we made the chairs to go with the table, we did not.
We found these solid wood chairs online by Better Homes and Gardens for $50 each. For solid wood, it would have cost almost that much to build each chair and would have taken longer to build the chairs than it would take to build the table. To make the table and chairs look like a set, we color match the paint for the table base to the chairs. Let's break down the total cost of our dining room table build. The spalted maple for the tabletop was the most expensive part of this build and cost $400. The table legs cost $100 and the one by fours for the table base cost $100. The screws and hardware cost $25, and the paint cost $25, and the top took two quarts of satin Minwax polycrylic, which cost $50. All in, our beautiful one-of-a-kind dining room table cost $700. Thank you so much for following along on this journey of building our one-of-a-kind dining room table. Be sure to like and subscribe so that you never miss any of our videos.